Hello, uh, my name is Philip Day and I'm the maker of Whirly Gig and I'm going to take you through how to use Whirly Gig with the Vive controllers and also a brief uh, overview of just the menu systems and everything. So let's first start off by starting up Steam VR. Uh, so as um, as you can see, we've got the uh, headset is ready and the two base stations ready. I'm going to leave these two off uh, for now and then start them up once I start up Whirly Gig. You can have them already available when you start uh, Whirly Gig anyway, but I wanted to just demonstrate what happens if they're off. So now we've started up Whirly Gig. This is a clean installation, so there's nothing nothing's changed in here yet. So if you've just installed it, this is the first thing that you'll get to see. So I'm just going to briefly put the headset on. So here is uh, an example of the menu system and this, the very first screen. So um, this is just simply a still to be able to demonstrate uh, something to view and something to look at on the opening screen. Uh, once you've navigated to your own videos, you, know, you won't see this anymore. Um, so first off, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to press R on the, uh, on the keyboard just to recenter it because the uh, headset was in my lap, so it was a bit low. Um, I will demonstrate how to do that with the Vive in Vive controllers in a second. So as you can see, we've got a menu system in front of us. And we have arrows here also in front of us. Now, you might be able to see that there is a blue dot that is directly in front of us attached to their HMD, their head mounted display. So this will appear in whatever direction we look at. Now this is what happens when you don't have any Vive controllers uh, and you can simply navigate the whole menu system uh, using using these. So if you have an Oculus then you might have the uh, gamepad and you can use all the options there on the gamepad to be able to navigate through all the different things. To use these arrows going up and down simply point the head mounted display and press the fire button. Uh, or play pause button, which is in um, on this one as it's there, or it's spacebar, or it's left click, uh, or it's enter, or it's return. Uh, also on the Vive controllers, it's trigger. So I'm not going to do anything. What I'm going to do now is turn the Vive controllers on. And you can see there it's in the view. And once they are both on, you can see we have now a whole menu system appearing on the controller and also the blue dot is now attached to a laser pointer on one of the Vives. Uh, I'm left-handed so I'm going to have the laser pointer on my left hand, like so. Uh, and what this does is that, not looking at this point of it, but this, this works in exactly the same way as the actual um, dot when it's attached to the head mounted display. So if we can look at it like so. So I'm just going to click onto the next uh, still that's in this directory, which is the um, which is the default directory, like so. And I just press the trigger then. And as you can see there, you see the trigger. There's only two in here, so go backwards and forwards, like so. Uh, and you can change all these options quite simply by pointing at them and pushing the trigger up and down. Now the good thing about the Vive controller uh, controllers is you have a whole load of other settings actually on the other Vive controller. First off you've got your main settings here that you can see. Uh, what we have here is the Explorer. Uh, if I can get, get this as big as possible. We have the Explorer. We have Save and Load. We have Loop. We have Stereo set, uh, Changes. So at the moment this is set to Over and Under and as you can see there Over and Under. Glue to head mounted display. So if I click on that, it'll attach to the head mounted display. This could be useful if you're, say, lying in bed watching a film and just wanted to be able to see the menu here right above you. And uh, this is the uh, eye order of a stereo image. So currently left, right, and then right, left, backwards and forwards. Um, what you have in the center here is the volume control. Now you can't change this at the moment because we don't have a video uh, working, but uh, if we have a video up and running, then that will be changeable. And along here we have the uh, we have the 
timeline of the actual video that we're watching. So that's all the main controllers, but also on the back of the actual uh, Vive controller, if I just turn it over, we have a couple of extra options. We have reset position and we have mirror. So these are, I have put these on the underside of it because it's something you'd only use once uh, and it's kind of more technical side of things. So the reset position allows you to reset the direction things are in. So if I, if I look over here and hit reset position, it resets in front of me. So you can move your cinema system around to point in whatever direction you want to look in without having to, without having to, uh, having to reposition yourself or recalibrate anything. The second thing is the mirror uh, off and on. Now, I'm not going to click it because it will actually turn off this mirroring mode. But if I click it, then you won't be able to see what I'm actually watching. So that's good if, uh, if, you, if you didn't want uh, other people to see what you were looking at uh, and you just wanted that mirroring off. I think it also is a benefit to, uh, uh, to the speed and playback. So let's get this uh, centered as best I can. Okay, so now we want to navigate to where our films are. So on each controller we have a touchpad. Now this touchpad acts like the up and down arrows and left and right arrows that you get on your keyboard and also on the D-pad of your controller here. Now what I have actually done here is that the left and right, uh, so if you click left and right, so if I, if I uh, click left, as you can see in the menu, uh, in the menu you've moved left, and that's the menu that's currently selected. So you can also use the uh, touchpad to be able to navigate up and down this menu. And on the right, you can do the same thing, right, like so. Now I haven't, I haven't made it click up and down on the touchpads. What it is is it's a simple tap. So you can hold it down like that and it will just simply cycle through it. Or you can tap one at a time like so. Now you'll notice that on uh, the, uh, the controls disappeared then, that's when if there's no movement on the actual controls though, the actual controls will dis disappear. So it's, uh, it's not very sensitive so that if you're holding them they will just disappear uh, if you don't move around too much. But Generally speaking, means you can have them on the side and the controls will disappear while you're watching a film. So as we go up and down, so simply tap, 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 tilt, oop, tap, 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 like so. Now I'm clicking backwards and forwards. So if I go back to what this was, which was barrel. Zero, and uh, it's not in mono. So if you look at this, I can point it there. It's side by side, but it's not side by side, it's actually over under. And then that's back to that again. So let's navigate to our X, uh, films on our, pay, uh, our own hard drive. So if I point to that, click. So here we have a list of folders. So I'm just tapping to go up and down the list. If I click left, it will go up a folder. And if I click right, if it's over a video, it will play the video. Or if it's over a folder, it will go into a folder. So right now I want to go all the way up to my root. So I'm just going to keep clicking left, 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 left. Now we're back to the root here. So tap, tap, into C. Go to media, go into media, go to go into videos, and these are my videos now that I can now play. So let's quickly choose one. So I've got catching up, so I can press the trigger, or I can push left. So I'm going to press the trigger, catching up. Not quite sure what this video is actually. Oh. It's one of my fine art films. So catching up. So I know that this is in a in a um, fish uh, in a cinema system. So if I click go to cinema, so it's called Reason. And when it starts playing, there we go. 
So now we've got a film playing, I, uh, I can pause it by pressing the uh, trigger, I can play it again by pressing the trigger. If I pause it, I can then change these options, so I could scale this up, I could push the distance back, or back and forth. I've got stretch here, and what this means is that the actual player works out the uh, dimensions based on the, uh, the dimensions resolution of the film. But if it doesn't do it correctly, you can also stretch it and squash it however you like. I have this timeline at the bottom here, and if I point wherever I want to go onto the timeline and hit go, it will jump to that point on the timeline, like so. That is also mirrored by the actual controller. So if I press play, as it's playing, you can see here the timeline slowly working its way through. If I wanted to jump to the beginning, I could just point there, jump to the beginning, and back at the beginning again. Jump there, and then we've got halfway through. Now something you can do is that you can save the position and the film that you're watching. So if I tap on the save, these boxes come up. And I can, these are currently eight boxes. I hope to add more in the future. But if I point at one, so if I point at the first one, hit there, hit save, and that saved the catching up the name, the date which I've saved it at, and also the position in the film that it's been saved at. So if I ever want to come back to the app again, I can go back to load, and I'll do that in a little bit. So now we go back to here. I could either go through this folder one at a time by simply going through here or I can go back to my menu here and just go through here so you saw earlier a still from Vortex and it's the actual film is here so I'm going to actually play this so I selected it press play now I know it's side by side and I know it's fisheye um, when you get a film that's in 360 degree you'll have to know what format it's in. So I set that to uh, fisheye, I set that to side by side, and I pray. So it's up there. One other thing I do know about this film is that actually it's a tilt of 45 degrees. So there we go. So now that's playing. I'm going to Set the volume down to zero. I can jump to anywhere in here. So click on save, find a slot, save that, and then I've saved the position for that. So if I want to go back to the other film, click on there, click on catching up, click on load, and we're back at exactly the same place as where we led. Uh, uh, left off. So, what other options do we have? Like I say, we've got glue to foot face, which allows it to be glued to the face. These options will continue to work. A little bit more complicated to be able to do it because it's glued to your face. And so, let's go up and have a look at a couple of images. So, tap to go up. Down to images, and I'll pick any image. And there you go, we've got an image there. And again, of course, I can save it. I can change this to cinema curved. Doesn't look quite right, aspect ratio, so I can just stretch it out. Or not. Adjust the scale, like so. All settings for each of the video are saved in their own particular locations. So that now has its settings there. If I go back to here and load this one, like so, you can see that it's actually gone back to fisheye side by side and it's got the tilt and the uh, field of view all set to what it was before. 
Um, so, and that, generally speaking, is that. Uh, so you can just carry on watching your film like so. Uh, it's running a little, a little jekyll as I'm currently recording at the moment. So there's a bit of bandwidth issues there, but normally it will run smoothly if the codecs are correctly installed. And and that is that is the uh, general overview of using the Vive controllers. Now, if I turn the Vive controllers off, then you'll see the actual pointer goes back to the headset. All of the options that you've got on the Vive controllers are all accessible by the uh, gamepad. And if you want to alter the gamepad, you can simply do this by pressing X and it will bring up a picture of the gamepad. And then you can change, change these, or you can see these are the ones that I've set for default. You can change them if you want. So for instance, I if I wanted to, I could have a reset orientation. I could change that to loop video, for instance, or I could change, uh, I could leave that reset orientation and change the save and load to quit. So I'm going to continue to add more options in here. So a lot of the options that are available, such as move forward and move back, uh, you can actually start adding into your system if you want to use those or you find those useful. So once those are changed, I can then use them in the actual, in the player. So that's it. I hope you, know, you find this tutorial useful and uh, I look forward to seeing your opinion, uh, seeing your suggestions and uh, whether you like the actual player uh, in the uh, discussion board on the Steam website. Thank you very much. Bye.